This is Song Goddess Room, and I'm your host, Tomoko. Today's guest is my homegirl from Japan, Tomoka. Let me tell you, we get mistaken all the time because I am Tomoko with three O's. She is Tomoka with A at the end. My website is Tomoko Music, and her website is Tomoka Music. <laughs> I am a city girl from Osaka. She's a country girl from Gifu. I'm a jazz and soul singer songwriter, and she's a real funky, seriously accomplished saxophonist. If you hear her play, it will blow your mind. <laughs> she earned a master's in music from the State University of New York at Buffalo in saxophone performance. She has appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live with Fat Joe, Remy Ma, and Taida Asain. She toured in Japan and the U.S. with the legendary Japanese blues singer, Kenichi Mikawa. She's a member of all-female jazz group, Jazz in Pink, and all-female sax quartet, The Saxations. She performed for numerous music festivals, including the Playboy Jazz Festival, Cancun Jazz Festival, Seabreeze Jazz Festival, Catalina Island Tracks Festival, and the Long Beach Jazz Festival, and many more. As a performer with Armed Forces Entertainment, she performed for soldiers, ambassadors, and diplomats at U.S. embassies and military bases in over 40 countries. She also performed in classical settings with the Buffalo Philharmonic Orchestra, Dortmund Symphony Orchestra, and Bemis Bay Pops Orchestra. Her educational pursuits include performances and workshops in elementary schools in Los Angeles area for Dream Award Education, led by Grammy Award winner, Bunny Howe. I am very excited to have my homegirl on my show. If you check out her site, tomokamusic.com, and message me through my website, tomokamusic.com, and let me know what you liked about the show, I will pick two lucky winners to receive her beautiful digital pictures with her autograph. So can I get a whoop whoop? So actually, she told me she only released a couple original tunes and she usually play cover songs. So I said, well, how she plays alive and improvisation on the spot every time is very similar to songwriting. It's her craft. But the bottom line is I just had to have her on my show. So there it is. So ladies and gents, please welcome Tomoka! Hi, everybody. How you doing? <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. Hi. This is the weirdest thing ever that we speak into each other in English for the sake of the show, right? Mm -hmm. I must confess, when I hear you speak in Japanese, you sound so country. Because I'm from Osaka City, it's such a contrast. When I hear you play Osaka, it's like, how did you get the funk? <laughs> So, first off, I want you to play a little sum sum and blow everybody's mind away. I mean, literally blow away. <laughs> <laughs> the flute sound you also play flute too right yes i do okay how long did it take for you to feel like you have mastered those horns well i started with a uh, piano when i was six mm. so i have a basic knowledge of the you know music theory mm -hmm. and then when i came to the united states this is a while ago <laughs> mm -hmm. when i was in high school and i was an exchange student so uh, i really didn't want to take much classes that I need to speak English. So I got attracted to taking math class and mm. um, like art class and also music class. And uh, I have advantage. I knew some theory and I know how to read music. So I took beginning instrument and I always liked saxophone because mm. I was the biggest fan of the band called The Square. Um, and that they're pretty big back in the 80s. That was a fusion band with the, mm -hmm. the front guy with a saxophone player with little mustache. So mm -hmm. I had the biggest crush on him. So I was like, yeah, I want to play saxophone. So first semester, they put me on the baritone. It's like, okay, well, that's not saxophone. Baritone is like, it looked like a small tuba. 
Mm -hmm. So I was like, fun, fun, fun. And second semester, somebody quit and I was able to get saxophone. So I started wow. like officially taking a group lesson. So um, that was like maybe like four or five of us just like randomly playing with like really basic things. And um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this went from there. So that was junior in high school. And mm -hmm. then uh, so I did a saxophone for about a half a year there. And I got transfer. Oh, the first city was in Morna Valley of all the place. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I got transferred second year to Buffalo, New York. That's where I joined a concert band. And, um, you know, I was in a um, band, I think I was like fourth chair, <laughs> if it's not fifth. <laughs> so I played the whole year and then um, I got a really good teacher as soon as I graduated high school. And um, I got a lot of, you know, a lot of lessons and uh, my performance got better. Once I got accepted to college, I was undeclared major, but I walk into music department and I auditioned and I, I just instantly become a music major. Oh. I was only playing like a year and a half before I become a music major on saxophone. <laughs> wow, so how many years? Huh, well, I was already gigging when I was 19, so I would mm. say, I don't know. A um, couple years, I was already gigging. <laughs> I was gigging on 19, so. So here's the thing, we both born and raised 100% Japanese, and I was singing Japanese songs at first, you know, mm -hmm. till nine years old. But my first American record I heard was The Carpenters, and that's how I learned not only American music, but also yeah. the English language from it. My pronunciation was already perfect when I was singing it. So what's your case? What was your first American record that changed your mm -hmm. life, per se? You know what? That was a wham of all the things. <laughs> <laughs> this was back in the 80s. Okay. And uh, their vocabulary was relatively easy. And, uh, you know, it was for, you know, at that age, like it was kind of cool to listen to like, yeah, I'm listening to English songs, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the wham, I, you know, I gravitated toward it. And um, of course, we didn't, you know, we didn't have anything online. So we have like this like, dictionary, so, like, you know, and I find out that like, I think that was a cassette I had. <laughs> the lyrics and like all the folded up papers. So I yeah. would look it up and uh, he's like, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, a lot of them, I have no idea what I'm saying. So I got to wake me up. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, like, I'm singing English, but most of the time I have no idea what I was saying. So yeah, Wham! Probably the one of the first American songs that I started listening to. What about saxophone player? You mentioned the group, but uh, who are the biggest influences? The Square, Takeshi Ito, um, he's mm. a, a saxophone player from The Square, and he was... Ah, yeah, oh, remember the group. Remember, yeah, they're still around. They're still playing. Yeah, so I think he was on the TV commercials. As a high school student, I went to a few of their shows, and I'm just like, I had such a crush on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I heard it so much. You know, I have an album on the cassette called Adventure, and I just, just listen to it every day, like when I'm studying for the test, like when I'm studying to get into the better college and things, I mean, high school, things like that. Um, he was always in the background. So I can probably play a lot of his song note to note just because I just heard it like hundreds of times. I get it. That's funny. <laughs> and that's what? Like, have no money. So, you know, like you have like this, like a 10 records, or, like a 10 cassette that you just keep playing. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Were well, there many other female saxophone players? I don't know many. You know, I think Candy Dolfer was like, I started finding out about her, but this was the early 90s. I was already in the U.S. I didn't know many women saxophone players when I was in Japan. I mean, we're going to talk about the one time we performed together. We were just going to do one song <laughs> at an open mic at the famous bootlegger in Las Vegas. And... You and me both showed up in red and you start blowing everybody's jaw dropped and I started singing superstition. We had a standing ovation. They could not believe what they heard. That was real fun. Tomoka and Tomoka, we called it T-Funk and yeah. I hope I hope we get to do it again. But uh, you also played with Mikawa Kenichi. Yes. Japanese ink, very famous ink singer I grew up with. A lot of people did. How did that come about? Well, uh, my friend Noriko, uh, she was MD in the show. She's a really good friend of mine, and she recommended me. So I was part of the LA band. You know, they liked us so much that uh, um, he flew us in, like me and Noriko, into Japan to do uh, some Christmas shows. 
Nice. And actually, she was, I mean, he was supposed to come back here to do another show, but um, it's got canceled with Corona. So hopefully, um, you know, they will schedule sometimes. I don't right. know. But, yeah. He looks really cool and calm all the time. <laughs> How is person? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. You were constantly playing. So yeah. you had shifted in terms of work. So how are you doing right now? And, you know, I'm keeping myself busy. Like before I was like a gig in like corporate casuals or like playing in restaurants or, or like doing a solo gigs. I was keeping busy, but all of a sudden my calendar got empty. I was also doing uh, school shows that you mentioned earlier. So I would go to like elementary school and do shows and workshops, but everything just disappears overnight. And it's like, ah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, you know, I go through the phase of like, and I just playing like a video game for all day. It's like, you know, I got to do something about this. And then uh, all of a sudden, a friend of mine uh, asking to like, hey, are you interested in joining the band from San Diego? It's like, yeah, sure. So we had a, a first rehearsal scheduled in March 20th, mm -hmm. and that got canceled because of COVID. So, but they decided to do weekly videos. Um, you know, one of those like a Brady Bunch Zoom video things. They invited me, me, me to be a part of it. And we've been doing this every single week. So I have a, like a, with them, I have a, like 16 videos out already. So we are doing this. You know, wow. This thing. So you know, I'm, I'm just happy that I can be a part of it. And, um, you know, if you go to a solid band music, um, on the Facebook, we do that. We release it every Saturday at five o'clock. So how oh, cool! Yeah, so that's good. And also, um, a lot of things just dropped in my lap. Um, you want to talk about that background? How you became a little TikTok star too, and also modeling. You know that you're gonna send me a new one, and I might be modeling too on your Instagram. So yes. Yeah, so if you notice the background, <laughs> let's get some <the> action. <laughs> Yeah, and so I start, um, you know, collaborating with this guy daily, Pike. He he's an ex comedian, but now he's into uh, like online boutique clothing, and he's also involved in hot sauce. <laughs> it's not only one; he have like a four different hot sauce, which is available on Amazon, and uh, pretty much every day. Like you know, recently it's been the morning, like about ten o'clock. Uh, we do a show called like a Dragon Princess Tomoka show. And uh, I just like randomly eat things with the hot sauce. <laughs> we'll play music or we play games. It's like a weird variety show. And mm -hmm. it's like a dragon puppet shows up and like, hey, how are you doing? I'm a dragon. And this is Princess Tomoka. It's like a little crazy things. But, you know, that's keeping me busy. And um, I, it's weird to say, but I've been modeling. <laughs> You know, like, I'm not, like, you know, like, 22 years old, but um, I just take pictures, and he just put it on the website, and I'm on it, and he's actually running the TV commercials in, like, northern L.A. area, like, Burbank, Beverly Hills, Bel Air. So a friend of mine would call, like, hey, Tomoka, I saw you on TV commercial after CNN, blah, 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 or, like, MSNBC. It's like, but, and I mean, Long Beach, I don't get that. It's like, oh, cool. <laughs> that's been keeping me busy as well oh, is that the dress that you're modeling for yeah actually um this is the dress called bluebird mm -hmm. and uh, it's like bodycon it's kind of fitting and uh, i also have uh, like a matching mask as well oh mm -hmm. that's cool yeah uh, in uh, fact um there's a tomoka mask coming up it's like based on this yeah <laughs> my shadow shape so there's like you say a lot of like this and like pink is that a sticker shape. Yeah, this is a sticker, yeah. That's nice. Yep. Okay. Let's get to the improvisation aspect in part two. I hope you enjoyed part one. Please continue to watch part two about songwriting as well. And don't forget to click subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about new videos of Songwriter's Room, my new music, or Japan news series. Arigato!